Okay, number one, super simple guys. So many people forget this. Turn your roaming on. Your uh, phone plan, let them know that you're gonna be traveling. So if you don't have a good roaming plan, then you need to get one. For example, I use AT&T, one of the best. Why? Because it works the exact same in the States. When I go home to visit my family back in Washington, it works the same there as it does here in Mexico or in Canada. So AT&T, one of the best. I know it's a little more expensive, but I definitely recommend it. And whatever you do, guys, turn on your roaming when you get to Mexico so you can contact whoever's picking you up, all right? The next one is have your transportation set up, okay? You can, most hotels, they have some sort of a transportation system. So contact that hotel, that resort, a lot of them have shuttles that come every hour or every two hours, something to this nature. If your hotel does not have that, set up a ride in advance because as soon as you get out of the airport, there's going to be a hundred guys, taxi guys hustling you, trying to get you to get in a taxi. Now, if you've got the money and you don't care and you're cool to spend 120, 130 bucks, who cares? It doesn't matter. Video probably isn't for you. Just pay the money, get in the taxi and go. But if you're trying to save a little cash, uh, set up a ride in advance, okay? So typically Uber cannot come into an airport. Now this depends on different cities and things like that, but here in Cabo San Lucas, Ubers can't come in and pick you up. Like you would have to walk very far outside of the airport and then call an Uber, okay? And these are, um, you know, Ubers and taxis, in, as in many cities, are fighting, and that's the same here in, in Cabo. So again, Ubers cannot come in to pick you up in the airport, but they can drop you off. So if you're in the vehicle, so for drop-offs, they can drop you off. And remember now, Ubers are about a fifth of the price uh, opposed to a taxi. So just like typically, like if I'm going from my condo downtown, that taxi is gonna cost me $20. Or when I go home, it's going to cost me $2.50. So you go ahead, do the math on there. Ubers are a lot cheaper. They work well. But at the same time, they cannot pick you up in high touristy areas. So if there's a spot downtown in the middle of downtown, that Uber is not going to go into there because he might have a problem with these other taxis. He could be in a fight. Uh, we actually just had a little issue here with um, you know Ubers protesting and they kind of blocked the freeway for a few hours. It was a bit of a nightmare. Um, and it, again, that's not just Mexico, that's, that's all over. They were doing the same thing in Bali. Uh, they were doing things like that in Thailand as well. You know, the, the taxi's a very old system and Uber's this new thing that's taking over. And you know, that's what happens. That's what happens. You're gonna have a fight when old school meets new school and they just start colliding. So. Again, have your ride set up. The next one, if you're going to rent a car, that's fine, you can rent a car. Make sure it's from a good company, do your research before, use the old Google, and see who's a good spot to rent a car from. But where they're typically gonna get you on is the insurance. They're gonna say, okay, this car is $50 a day. But then they're gonna say, you need to pay $100 a day insurance, and this is not true, this is BS. Like nobody I know in Mexico honestly has insurance. Very few people I know actually have insurance. Um, and they say that you need to have this full coverage, gajillion dollar in insurance. Again, not true, but that depends on your city. Remember guys, I'm just a guy here in Cabo. I don't know everything. So do your own due diligence, but typically that is BS and that's where they're gonna get you on these uh, really high prices. So set somebody, you know, figure out, figure it out beforehand so you know how much you're gonna pay and you're not getting ripped off. Okay, now that you've got your car, you're driving, the next trick that uh, they love to do here in Mexico is the gas trick. And you'll, when you pull up to your, you know, to pull up to go get some gas, if you don't look at what was on the, the person that pulled up before you, let's say that person put in 200 pesos and you say okay i'm gonna put in give me a thousand pesos all right so they're not gonna stop and if they don't put it back to zeros that's why you hear them all the time say zeros 
that means that they reset the clock back to zeros. If not, so they're gonna start at 200, they're gonna take it all the way up to 1,000, they're gonna charge you 1,000, you're gonna only get 800 pesos worth of gasoline, they're gonna take that 200 pesos and put it in their pocket. And that's a nice little hustle for them, congrats. Good job, nice hustle. Whenever, when everybody has a good hustle, it cracks me up. Now, they will do it on the other side as well. I've, I've been caught on the other side. So that means, okay, I've checked the zeros. I've been here a million times. I know what's up. And I look, okay, they get zeros, good. I give them a thousand. I go to drive away. I look, I forget to look at the odometer, or excuse me, not the odometer, but the, um, you know, the, whatever it is, the, uh, the screen on the on the gas pump and it's at 900 so he's ready to pocket that hundred into his pocket so you've got to watch it on both sides and what happens is you'll typically see people get out of their cars and watch them pump the gas and that's because there's a million little tricks that they do to um, yeah to kind of to get you and make their money because you got to remember these guys don't make a lot of money and um, you know, a uh, hundred pesos to them is, is more than they make in a day. I think the average minimum wage here is like $7 a day. So, you know, you can't, you can't blame them for trying to hustle a little bit. I'm going to be honest with you. So tip people too. I mean, if you're down here on holiday and, and you're just here having a good time, don't be afraid to tip the local people and stuff too, you know. Don't over tip because, again, you don't want to be in a, a dodgy area and look like a mark, but go ahead and tip people regular prices, especially when you're on holiday. When you're living here, it's different, um, you know, because you're living like a local, you know, of course, depends on your budget and things like this. But I always say, if you got it, give it, okay? Because these people, they need to live as well too. But at the same time, you don't want to get ripped off. Tip, 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 tip. I need to shave. What is this thing? It's a beast. Okay, what do we got next here? Okay, next on the list is the 50, is the 550 peso trick. Next on the list is the 550 peso trick. So let's say I pull in my wallet. So the next trick is the 500 fit, fit, that's a 20. The 550 peso trick. Now they've changed these. They have different ones that look a little different now. So a lot of times what happens, you could be paying gas. A lot of times you're buying a t-shirt, whatever it is you're doing. So you go, especially after you've been drinking, you've had, you've had a few too many margaritas, right? And you go and the guy says, oh, you're, it's 400 bucks. So you give him 500, right? He turns around, goes like this. Oh, you only gave me 50 bucks. Oh shit, I'm sorry, man. I'm oh, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm a little drunk, I'm a little buzzed up. Here you go, here's, here's another 500. And now he just scored himself a, uh, a nice profit there. So that one is a big one. You gotta watch out for that one. They do that with the thousand. The, the 500s and the 50s look quite similar. So that's the, the typical trick. But um, yeah, just we'll just watch out. And again, once they've they've got me a few times, and I always applaud them when they do because I've I've traveled enough to where I should know better. And um, yeah, whatever it is, what it is, man. You know, it's not like it's a lot of money to me, but uh, watch out for it because they will get you. The next one on the list is the big one. This is the sob story. My sister is in the hospital. My mother is in the hospital. My dad was just in a car accident and we need $3,000 or he's gonna die. And this is typically, you know, like an older guy, maybe he has a younger girlfriend or, you know, somebody that has money that's, you, that's in, invested some time into you. Okay, you, you're starting to like this person, you know, maybe you're not boyfriend and girlfriend or something, but you're starting to like each other. And I've seen this many times, again, not just in Mexico, this is huge in Thailand as well. You know, they call them sponsors. But um, yeah, they come up with their, um, you know, their little, uh, whatever, scam or their, you know, their sob story and uh, expect you to pay. And if you pay once, guess what? Two, three weeks, a month, two months later, they're gonna be asking for it again. They're gonna have another sob story and another sob story. And it's just gonna keep going as long as you pay. Hey, if you're a fool and uh, <laughs> you know, you're willing to pay that, 
that's on you. Then you got enough money, then I guess it doesn't matter. But um, that is a, a, another big one out here. So watch out for those oh, poor me stories. And hey, sometimes they're real. Most of the time they're not. Oh, all inclusive things, you know, this is just a tip, not really a scam per se. If you have all inclusive or you have a shuttle driver or something like this that picks you up on a regular, I say tip these guys immediately. Because if you don't tip these guys right off the bat and you're on like an all inclusive, they're gonna pour you crappy drinks. The same with the drivers, they're gonna put you, la they're not gonna pick you up. Like, so if they have to pick up 12 people, the van only fits 10, but you tip these guys five bucks last time, who do you think they're gonna pick up first? You or the guy that didn't tip anything? Okay, so these guys pretty much only make tips. Remember that, like bartenders out here, drivers, they don't make any money. Like they're making only tips. So again, guys, if you've got the money, you're on vacation, tip them. I mean, go ahead and tip them and they will remember that. They'll give you better drinks, they'll give you better service and uh, you'll have a better time as well. Uh, don't bring out a bunch of US dollars, actually. It's better to just pull money from an ATM. And the ATM you wanna use is any ATM that's connected to a bank, okay? You don't wanna use these standalone ATMs. These are the ones that will scan your card and they'll end up ripping, it, ripping you off. Now, also, it's much better to use a credit card versus a debit card because if you ever do get scammed and again this goes for all countries not just mexico it's much easier to get your money back on a credit card than it is on a debit card so like i've been scammed on both sides and with the actually to be fair i got my money back pretty quickly with the debit card but with the credit card i mean it's almost immediate because um it's, uh, yeah, it's just the way it works. I'm not exactly sure why. They just have to go through more loopholes and things like that. But yeah, use the credit card versus the debit card. Use the real ATMs. And if you really want to uh, save your money, you get yourself this bad boy here, which is a Charles Schwab bank account. Now this bad boy pays you back all your ATM fees no matter where you go. So I lost. I counted thousands and thousands of dollars when I lived in Thailand just through ATM fees because my, I had a bank in the States. I still have a bank in the States and I have a bank in Mexico and I have a bank in Thailand. But this card gives you back, um, pays back all your ATM fees. So it doesn't matter even if I was to use one of those crazy little uh, ATMs. I've seen ones that charge 50 US dollars as an ATM fee. And if I was to use that, this credit card pays me back at the end of the month and boom, you're good to go. So if you get the chance, get that card and you have to keep quite a bit of money in it. Like if you just keep a few hundred dollars in it and you use it when you travel, they will cancel that card. So you gotta keep a fair amount of money in it and use it for other things too, not just that. I mean, use it when you're buying gas or when you're at the restaurant or, or something to that nature. Because if you just use it when you're traveling, they will catch on and then they will suspend that account. All right, but that card is a lifesaver. Timeshare, okay, timeshare. People, as soon as you know you're getting off the airplane, people are gonna try to hit you for timeshares. People are gonna trade you golf for timeshares. Timeshare is not a scam. Timeshares are real, like it, it's just your time versus your money. What do you have more of, time or money? If you have more money than time, don't do a timeshare. But if you have more time than money, you can do it and you can make a lot of money. I've seen people actually come out of there with like $500 in, in gifts. I've seen people get you know golf that's worth $500 or more. Um, there's a lot of benefits to timeshare. I mean, I'm not saying buy the timeshare per se, but I am saying if you've got the time, you can make some money off of it and you can um, you know, make some benefits depending what they're offering you. So again, that's up to you. What do you got more of, time or money? Okay, next one, pretty obvious. Guys, when you're going out to the club or you're going out in town, don't take your wallet that has 20 credit cards in it and you know your all of your IDs and just everything and put it in one wallet. Just take what you need. Just take one credit card, some cash, 
that's pretty much it. That's all you're gonna need. You don't need a big old purse full of a gajillion things with your passport in it. Keep a picture on your phone of your passport and keep it in your front pocket. That's it. Because if you're at a big club and you're shaking your booty and you've got your wallet in your back pocket, people will pickpocket. It's not very common. Not very common at all, but it does happen. And especially if you're drunk and you're one of those kind of kind of guys, it's on you. That's on you. All right? Yes. So again, yeah, if you also if you have a house you want to sell, hit up your boy. Or if you're looking to, uh, to purchase a house and you want to drive around and look at some houses, hit me up. I mean, I will pick you up at the airport. I will take you around and we will look at properties together and I will find you the deal of your, no, how, how, how did Pedro say it? If you, if, you, if you come with me, all your wildest dreams will come true. I don't think that's right, but you know where I'm getting at. All right, guys. All right, love you all. Let's have a wonderful day.